All right guys, we're talking derivative rules today and you should be really excited because this makes finding the derivative a lot easier, okay? So yesterday we talked about the limit definition of a derivative. So basically we're um, you know, finding that rate of change and we're making the space between our two point infinitely little so we can find the derivative that way. Well today we're gonna learn a bunch of rules that you can use so that you don't have to do all that algebra every time. Um, and it's really exciting. Um, and I only made you suffer for one day with the limit definition before I taught you the fun stuff. So you're welcome. Anyway, so I'm gonna have a couple videos in this one so they're not hugely long, um, but let's get started. So first, derivative rules. We have four different rules we're gonna talk about. The first one is the power rule. And the power rule says that if we have x to some power, to find the derivative, all we have to do is take that power, okay, so x to some power, all we have to do is take that power, put it in front of x, and then subtract one from the power. So let me say that again. We take x, the power, we put it in front of x, and then we subtract one from the power. So we end up with n x to the n minus one. So something like x squared, we take the power, we bring it in front, and we have 2x, and then we subtract 1 from that power, which is 2 minus 1, which is 1, so 2x. And that's it. The derivative of x squared is 2x. That's a little bit faster than the limit definition. Okay. Sorry, Terry. All right, let's look at our next one, the constant rule. And the constant rule says that if c is a constant, the derivative of c is 0. Okay, and oh, I should talk about this notation, remember d dx? is how um, you'll see it, which means we're taking the derivative with respect to x of a function. And typically, the most common derivative we take is the derivative of y with respect to x, which is dy dx. So if we have a constant and we take the derivative of that, it's always going to be 0. And here's why. Let's imagine or picture what a constant looks like. If I have the con y equals 3, this is a constant, right? Then I graph it and it looks like this, right? Okay, what's the derivative of that? What's the rate of change of that line? What's the slope of the tangent line to that line? Well, this line isn't changing at all, so its rate of change is zero. If you look at the slope of the tangent line, you see the tangent line would also be just a horizontal line that touches that line, and that has a slope of zero, so a constant never changes, so its rate of change is zero. So anytime you take the derivative of a constant, it's zero, okay? Now the scalar multiple rule tells us that if we have a function that's multiplied by a scalar, something like this, when we take the derivative of this function, all we have to do is take the derivative of the function and multiply it by the same scalar. So if we have any number multiplied by our function, like 3 times x to the fourth, we, all we have to do is differentiate x to the fourth. We just have to take the derivative of x to the fourth, and then we multiply it by that constant in front, which would be, in that case, 3. Okay. The last rule that we're going to look at is the sum rule. And it's really important that you understand that this is the sum rule and not the product rule. Okay, so we're only talking about when we're adding functions together, when we're adding terms together. Okay, when we're adding things together, we can use the sum rule. And the sum rule says, oops, if I can get my finicky board to work. Okay. The sum rule says that if I want to take the derivative of, I won't use that notation, let's use, if I want to take the derivative of two separate functions added together, then I can take the derivative of the first function and add it to the derivative of the second function. So basically, I can just take the derivative of each of the terms and I can just add them together. So if you had x to the fourth plus x to the third, x squared, all you would do is you would take the derivative of x to the fourth 
then take the derivative of x to the x cubed, and then take the derivative of x squared and just add all of those together. Okay, so let's see how this actually looks in our examples. Okay, so number one, f of x equals x to the fourth. Okay, now this is just a straight product rule. Okay, or not product rule, excuse me, this is a straight power rule. Very different beasts, the product rule and the power rule. Okay, the power rule says that I take my power, I bring it down in front, and then I just subtract one from my power. And I should make sure I use proper notation. The derivative of x to the fourth is 4x four cubed. It's very important that I don't just write equals 4x cubed. Because does x to the fourth equal 4x cubed? Absolutely not. They're totally different functions, right? What does equal 4x cubed is the derivative of f. So f prime equals 4x cubed. All right, let's take a look at another one. y equals x to the negative 2 thirds plus 3. Well, the first thing that I notice is that I have two terms. See, one term, two terms, okay? So I'm going to take the derivative of each term separately because I have two terms, okay? So y prime of this entire function equals y prime of the first function plus y prime of the second function. Okay, that's our sum rule. So let's take the derivative of each of these. Well, the derivative of a constant is zero. And then we just have to take the derivative of this. And it looks really scary because it's a fraction and a negative, but guess what? It's still just a power. So we really just do the power rule, just the straight power rule, okay? So y prime equals negative 2 thirds, we bring the power down, we have x, and then we take the exponent that we currently have and we subtract 1 from it. Well, negative 2 thirds minus 1 is negative 2 thirds minus 3 thirds. Okay, so it's really important that you subtract 1, not add 1. Okay, so negative 2 thirds minus 1, negative 2 thirds minus 3 thirds is negative 5 thirds. And we don't really need this 0 anymore because we know that it doesn't matter, you know, we just have this invisible zero on the end. But, so the derivative of this original function is y prime equals negative two-thirds x to the negative five-thirds. Okay, let's look at a couple more. h of t equals five minus one over two t cubed. Okay, so now we're taking the derivative of, with respect to t it doesn't really matter. We just know now that t is our variable. Okay, so we would say like d dt instead of d dx, but it doesn't matter. And in this case, we're going to say h prime instead of f prime or y prime or anything like that. Okay, so remember h prime of this entire function, these are two separate terms in my function, so really it's h prime of the first function minus h prime of the second function, okay? And then we also know that h prime of a constant is zero, so that whole, we've taken care of the five, it's really important we don't just skip over that, we wanna make sure we see that we actually did do something with the five, okay? Then we subtract h prime of one over two t cubed. So this looks really hairy, but the key is, anytime you see anything, think, is there a way to write that as an exponent? Is there a way to write this as a constant multiplied by uh, t to some exponent? Okay, so first we see that we actually have one half here, right? So I have um, h of x, we can rewrite it. And again, I'm gonna make sure I write the right notation that I'm not talking about h prime of x now. I'm talking about h of x, right? I'm just changing the way it looks. That h prime of x really equals one half times one over t cubed, right? I just split my fraction up. 
And then we remember that one over t cubed is really just t to the negative three. So we say h of x, oh sorry, h of t. Ooh, I know you all caught that and you were screaming at, this, at your phone. Mrs. Barney, you screwed up. Never. All right, h of t, h of t is this. We know that t to, uh, one over t cubed is really t to the negative three. Now this is just a constant multiplied by a function that has a power and we can do that, right? Okay, so h prime of t equals one half and we bring our power down. So we multiply by negative three t and then we subtract one from negative three, which is negative four. And so then we just do this algebra here. So we say h prime of t equals negative three halves t to the negative fourth. And that is our derivative with respect to t. Oh, I forgot a negative sign up here. Okay, sorry, there's a negative sign up here. So this negative, this one half has been negative this whole time. So that becomes a positive. All right, you guys saw my only two mistakes for the whole year right there. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, so it's positive three halves. Okay, one last one. We have f of x equals five over two x cubed. Okay, so it's important to re remember that the two is also cubed. So let's just rewrite f of x and let's make sure we write the proper notation. Let's make sure we understand that we're rewriting f of x, that we're not actually um, finding the derivative yet. Okay, so we're just gonna rewrite f of x. So this is five over two cubed times x cubed. All right, and then we can just find what that two cubed is. So that's five over eight times x cubed. And then we can just remember that this is really just a fraction and we could split that fraction up, right? So we could say f of x equals 5 eighths times 1 over x cubed. And we can make sure we did our math right because we can just multiply this and realize that it goes back to that, right? So we just split up our fraction there. And now we can rewrite it one more time as an exponent. Remember, we always want to try to make our function into an exponent because we have a power rule that we can use with the exponents, so it makes it so much easier. So that's just x to the negative 3. Now I can differentiate. So I go f prime of x equals 5 eighths times negative 3x, and then I say negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. So f prime of x equals negative 15 eighths x to the negative 4. So that is the easy way to do derivatives.